So what if Markel Fultz never forgot how to shoot? And he went to the 76ers after the 2017 draft, and he was everything they believed he was going to be, which at one time was a guy who could score from basically anywhere. Break down defenders, play in the pick and roll, pull up from three, pull up from mid-range, hit floaters. He was a total package. He was the number one pick for a reason. He showed signs of Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard, that type of point guard, right? Well, first, just from a pure basketball standpoint, before we start projecting records and all that stuff, um, I feel like the Fultz-Ben Simmons two-man game could have been really interesting because we have seen when Ben Simmons sets screens and does that type of stuff, he can be very effective. But I don't think the Sixers have had a ball handler good enough to really allow Simmons to do that on that level. I mean, you could argue Jimmy for half a season or whatever it was. But I feel like Fultz could have been the perfect guy for that because uh, it just would have been really difficult to defend, you know what I mean? And Fultz would have the perfect skill set to go along with Simmons setting screens. I think the, f- the first thing that would do is it would force teams to be like, who, who are we going to have defend Ben Simmons? Because if we're going to do a smaller dude, then you know that could protect us when we want to switch onto Fultz, but then it's like, are we going to have to, you know, deal with Simmons posting our guy up? And we can argue whether Ben Simmons posts up enough or whatever right now. But the other thing it would have done is it would have just given Philly a dynamic shooter. And that, along with J.J. Redick for a couple seasons. And I honestly don't know if they end up doing the Jimmy Butler or Tobias Harris trades if they just have Fultz being really good the whole time. And we can dive into that in a second. But we all know that Philly has needed shooting, and Fultz certainly would have provided that. And of course, Fultz would have been perfect with Embiid for a lot of the same reasons as Simmons, the pick and rolls and all that. And we can still argue about whether Simmons would be able to play off of all that stuff effectively. So maybe there's a chance that Philly's stuff problems offensively occasionally would still pop up. But they certainly wouldn't pop up as much when you throw a guy who would have been as talented and as versatile offensively as Fultz, then it certainly would have opened up more things. I think another thing about it is it would have made Philly really tough to deal with because they could have staggered the minutes so much, you know, with Fultz and Simmons, Fultz and Embiid, whatever it would be, you know what I mean? So anyway, if we look at that 2018 season, what would Fultz have averaged with this Sixers team that won 52 games and lost to the Celtics in round two? Maybe like 17 points or so. Because I just imagine it wouldn't have been a one-man show. You know, Embiid took 17 shots that year a game. Simmons took 12. And the other guys would have played off of it all. Sarich, Covington, and all them. But it still wouldn't have been like Trey Young and with the Hawks where everything runs through him. So we'll say Fultz averages like 17 a game. And I think... um, What would have been the starting five? It would have been Fultz... Simmons, Embiid, Covington, Saric. If I remember correctly, I believe the Simmons, Covington, Redick, Embiid, Saric lineup, the original lineup for this, was really good that season. Like, they kind of destroyed teams when those five were out there together. Um, Yeah, according to basketball reference, that lineup was plus 20 in basically 600 minutes. So if you would have had Fultz out there, we assume it would have still been good. And I feel like there could have been a lot of versatility where you probably could have taken Saric off the floor for Fultz and you could have gotten really scary with just a whole lot of versatility. And I guess, would Covington be the four on on defense or would it be Simmons? I don't totally know, but you could do that. You could pull Redick for Fultz and have like a lot of switchability around Fultz. Like there's just a lot of things they could have done whereas what ended up happening was Philly just kind of held on to that five-man unit so much and they still had success when they moved away from it but it wasn't the same thing and I think a lot of that was revealed in that Celtics series I do think they still would have beaten Miami in round one Um, if we talk about that Celtics series uh, you know the Celtics with no Kyrie no Hayward and Horford playing out of his mind Tatum also averaging 24 a game in that series good lord as a rookie 
Do the Sixers win that series? I don't know, because I think the Embiid-Horford thing still kind of would have happened. I mean, Embiid did average 23-14-4 in that series. It wasn't like he was killed by Horford, but we know what happened. You know, his his usual unstoppable post-play was knocked down to just pretty good, and the Celtics were able to attack him and space the floor out like crazy, and they, I mean, the Sixers had to move him on to... I think it was Marcus Morris because they were just like, you're not effective defensively at all right now. And could Fultz have fixed all of that? I don't know, but I know that Fultz would have scored a lot of points and maybe he just makes so many threes and is just makes them so difficult to defend that the Sixers win that series anyway. I mean, you look at it like Bellinelli played 24 minutes a game in that series. He wasn't that good. TJ McConnell played 23 and... I mean, he was serviceable, I guess. Ilya Sova played 20 minutes a game. It's like you take a good chunk of those minutes and you just give it to Fultz who can shoot from everywhere and break down guys off the dribble. And maybe the Celtics defense, which was really good and did a hell of a job slowing down Philly, maybe they just wouldn't have been able to do it in that scenario. You know what I mean? So it's definitely tough. Now, do I think if they would have beaten that Celtics team, maybe, maybe not. Do I think they would have beaten the Cavs in the next round? No, but that's just a testament to LeBron more so than anything else. I mean, Philly definitely would have had the size to deal with him. And they might not have been able to space out and bead like that. I mean, that Cavs team in 2018 was not that good. LeBron did have to go pretty wild in those playoffs. I don't, maybe. Maybe they would have managed to beat him. I don't know. And then when we move on to 2019... Which, side note, the Sixers played 26 players in 2019. It's pretty wild. This was, of course, last season where they lost to the Raptors in that insane Game 7. So this is when the Fultz is really good thing starts to get super interesting to me because it's like, did the Sixers trade for Jimmy Butler? Did they trade for Tobias Harris? Or did they just hold on to everything because Fultz is that big-time other scorer? Because I think by this point, you probably would have had a scenario where Embiid averages, what did he average this year? 27, I believe. Yeah, he averaged 27 points. Probably pretty similar with Fultz. Simmons would average about 16, 17. And I think Fultz would have averaged like 22 or so. Maybe 20 because three guys who shoot the ball a lot. You know, but it would have been offset by Covington and Saric and Redick not shooting as much, you know, playing off of all that. So I don't know, like, do they feel a need to trade for Jimmy Butler 10 games into the season or whatever it is? Or do they just just like, you know what, we're going to keep Covington and Saric and we just think our team makes sense. Now, could they have still made some sort of move around something? You know, whether it's solidified the bench a little bit or is it um, looking to improve on the Covington or Saric positions? Maybe they get another 3 and D guy. I really don't know what they would have decided to do. I mean, you could talk me into them still doing the Jimmy Butler trade, but it's just, it's difficult to imagine. Like, would they have really just been like, all right, Fultz, Simmons, Embiid, Jimmy, let's go. Don't know. Do not know. Now, would they have done the Tobias trade? Uh, Potentially. I mean, with the idea being, yeah, Tobias, another guy who would like to dribble the ball, but... We think he can play off of the three guys we already have. It's very difficult to tell. I mean, that year, Philly, they were like so many different teams because, for one, Embiid played 64 games, so that already made it a little tough for them to really get super comfortable with each other. But then it's like they trade for Jimmy early in the year, and then they trade for Tobias later on in the year. And this was the season in which the Fultz thing really hit, like, kind of its peak of, like, what do you do with this guy? If we can remember, there was that whole thing about, do they start Fultz, do they start Redick, and it was all just really awkward. And I feel like if they just would have went into this season being, like, Fultz, you're playing next to Simmons and Embiid, everybody else, you're playing off of that. Could they have not had, like, an Orlando Magic, Shaq and Penny sort of situation, or... KD, Russ, and Harden situation where they win an insane amount of games while being really young. 
Maybe. They won 51 games that year. All this being said, do I think they would have beaten the Raptors in that Game 7? Well, that's a tough one because that Raptors team was great defensively and Jimmy Butler was really good. And they looked upon Jimmy to make plays in the fourth quarters and stuff. And I don't know if, you know, if that same thing popped up, would they have had Fultz doing that? I mean, there's also a world in which the, you know, Ben Simmons is more active playing off of Fultz, like I mentioned earlier. I mean, that's the thing about operating in the unknown. It just, whatever you foresee, there's no way of being proven wrong or right for that matter. So... I don't know, like, would Fultz have been doing isos and pick and rolls in fourth quarters with Ben Simmons standing in the dunker spot? Would the spacing have still been bad at times? If we run this whole scenario again, I'm sure the most insane shot of all time does not happen in that game seven. So that one's very interesting. If you force me to pick, I feel like they would still lose to that Raptors team because I think Jimmy at, what, Jimmy Butler at 29 in a tough playoff series, probably better than Markel Fultz in his second season, right? But even then, it's tough because then you're also taking into account like Covington would still be here and Saric, and maybe there would just be so much shooting on the Sixers that it would make up for all of it. Now, would they have beaten the Bucks in the conference finals? That's a tough one. I mean, the Bucks could have stretched out Embiid. The Sixers would not have a defender on the level of Kawhi. And they wouldn't they would also have a guy that the Bucks could attack in JJ Reddick, whereas the Raptors didn't really have that from what I remember. I mean, I guess Van Fleet, but I don't know, even then I think Reddick would be a little more susceptible to being attacked by the Bucks on offense. So th- that'd be a very interesting one. I feel like you could get differing opinions. I feel like the Bucks would win that, if anything, just because I don't think Philly would have Kawhi's just crazy shot making, unless we believe that Markel Fultz would have just been that good in his second season, but I don't know. And then if we move on to what would have happened this year, so here's the interesting thing if we play this season back, you know, before basketball ended and all that, would the Sixers have still signed Al Horford? Because I believe the money would still be similar. Especially if we're operating in this world in which they don't trade for Jimmy Butler or Tobias Harris, you know what I mean? Could they have used that money for someone besides Tobias Harris? Because in this scenario, Fultz would still be on his rookie contract. So, could they have maxed out some other player who could have been available? There's a world in which they get in on some other trade that happens. You know, there's a lot of scenarios when you're not only taking into account Fultz being really good, but also being really cheap for four seasons. You know what I mean? But let's say they still did the Horford contract. Well, that probably would have still been a loss for them because we've seen how Horford has been this season. But even then, it's like, would Fultz and Horford not be the perfect one-two combo? Potentially, I don't know. Again, it's tough to really tell with all this, but I think it's interesting to think about nonetheless because Philly... They believed that they were getting a 20-point scorer who could shoot threes off the dribble and do all that stuff. I mean, he was was really praised as the number one pick. I mean, I remember seeing some things about how he could have ended up being one of the better number one guys. And just a wild story to see what actually happened. As far as moving on, do I think Philly could win, like, titles and stuff? with Fultz, Simmons, and Embiid like that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the perfect guy next to Embiid and Simmons would be Markel Fultz, you know? A guy who can run screens with both of those guys, but also play off of them and do all that stuff. So, I guess where I end up on it is maybe Philly could have made it to the finals within Fultz's first three seasons. That'd be pretty crazy, but I don't think it's I don't think it's insane, although if you force me to pick, I don't think it would have happened. But moving forward and looking at where Philly is now and imagining if Markel Fultz was in the situation and picturing that, yeah, the roster around him looks a little different and it's impossible to tell how much different, I think that scenario would be better than what we have right now, which is, of course, this season for the Sixers was not great. And even as I say all that, 
I'm still pretty scared because I believe my Celtics would be facing them in round one if we do get playoff basketball again. So that's what I got. Philly continues to be very interesting, and the Markel Fultz situation was really fascinating, wild stuff that I assume one day we're going to get potentially more of a deep dive on because I still feel like there's a, a cloud of uncertainty around the whole thing. But anyway, that's going to do it for me.